The first time I believe I ever encountered art made by somebody other than me that I, that, I, that I could talk to was in college. It was my freshman year and there was a, a non-traditional student uh, graduating. She was probably in her 40s or so and she was having a senior thesis. And I saw her exhibition and was just floored by the aura of the work. I've never seen anything that powerful and impactful, large scale, and they were huge charcoal drawings of, of just figures that she knew, people that she knew in the community. And I didn't know art could do that. You know, I know you get goosebumps when you hear songs or you see a movie and you cry or, or laugh when you watch a cartoon, but that was a different experience. And so that really kind of sharpened and focused what I really wanted to aim to do in my next four years there. My name is Patrick Rohammy and I'm a visual artist. I've drawn ever since I was a child, far back as I can remember. My mom and dad were very supportive and I always wanted to bring a new drawing to them. In addition to playing with toys, drawing was a way to play with and, and, and like have a better relationship with the characters I saw on TV, from the Cosby Show or to cartoons, to comic books, and I never lost that love. As I grew, I continued doing that. Other things came in from sports, uh, martial arts, baseball, uh, choir. But drawing and was always something I came back to. When I went to college, um, I really wanted to, to be an educator. And I looked around and I was like, what, what am I good at? What, what could I teach? And it just felt natural to, to, to continue doing drawing and this time like really dive in with classes. And I learned how much I love it. And then I learned what an artist was and that it could be a real profession and people do this and that and you travel and you exhibit and you talk and as I learned more about it, it just became uh, a deep fascination, an obsession, a, a love, a lifestyle. And it just continued to grow from there and I've never stopped. I got my first kind of momentum as a professional right after grad school when Wellesley College awarded me a uh, fellowship. I was the inaugural recipient of a, of a new fellowship they had created um, in the name of Alice C. Cole. And she graduated from Wellesley in uh, 1942. And uh, the fellowship allowed me to make work for a year without uh, the burden of income or worrying about uh, working or teaching in order to pay bills and allowed me just to create and it would culminate in an exhibition at Wellesley. And so uh, during that time, I went to Wellesley several times, spoke with uh, other artists there, spoke to the students, visited the museum, and then just put in the work and kept developing. And, and my first solo ex exhibition as a professional artist was in 2009 at Wellesley College, and it was the best experience. It was a great environment, great support, um, it was hugely meaningful for the type of work I make to be acknowledged by such an institution. The exhibit was called Equivalent Exchange and in part was inspired by the first presidential campaign of Barack Obama. As he was campaigning and it became very likely that he might win, I started to think about my own journey, my own development as a black man, and how do I think about my own identity when there's a, a huge spectrum from imagining my black body on the enslaved auction block to the presidential lectern and everything in between. And so that project really thought about maturation. Um, as one matures, some things are what's given up, what's gained. And uh, so it was a personal journey. It was a, a journey that looked out at what was happening in the world at the moment. And that work still kind of inspires me to this day.
I'm from Connecticut, but I lived many years in South Carolina, going back and forth between the two. Um, sports and family took me up and down the East Coast, so I was very familiar with the East Coast. I'm an East Coaster. When I was offered the position of, of assistant professor at the University of Illinois in 2009, that brought me to the Midwest for really the first time, the interview. The second time I came, uh, my wife and I, we toured, we were looking for houses and just getting a sense of, of the place. And that continued when I finally moved here. I tried to get stock of what the scene was like, what was art like, what was Chicago like, uh, what were our neighboring states like. And through that process, including the residency, I really learned about some of the awesome opportunities we have here locally, the healthy, vibrant art community we have in Urbana and in Champaign, the, um, the thriving history of, of Art Chicago, which is now Expo Chicago in, in Chicago, uh, Afrocobra. Um, but I also learned about other troubling histories that just weren't as transparent to me growing up. We didn't get it in, in, in American history, which was sundown towns. And uh, learning about why these, these areas that are occupied are so thinly and sparsely populated by diverse peoples and diverse thinking in terms of religious and religion and, 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 and backgrounds and ethnicities, um, orientations. And so um, that really inspired me to begin a project at the time in 2010 titled Significant Other. Again, starting with the personal, I was going through my own journey. Uh, my, wife, my wife and I were getting married. I was thinking about partnership and what it meant to be with another person. But in a more uh, national sense, I really started thinking about how are we considering people of color, women, LGBTQ uh, individuals, and how do we understand them? How do we think about them? How has art helped us to see them or see them in a very particular way? How can it help us see them differently and see ourselves differently? And so Significant Other really was about thinking through some of the ways that we perceive women and, and people of color in particular in painting. And then offer an opportunity through allegory and through, um, through, a, through a series of works to kind of reposition some of those expectations and start a new dialogue. My work has always been informed by the personal first. What's going on in my life? And then I keep looking outward to see how is this in some kind of connection with everything else going on in the world. And so four years ago, my mother had a stroke. And all of a sudden I found myself in a very reverse situation as, as kind of the steward of her being and, and, and in charge of her health. That was a very new place to be. And so I began to really reevaluate our relationship and, and, and develop even deeper and new appreciations for what we had and, and how we're developing today. And so that led me ultimately to a project titled Birth Throws. Birth Throws began with a painting of my grandmother, uh, my mother's mother, and that really inspired me to continue looking at my matriarchal line. A project is probably in the works years in advance. There are things that, you know, are coming to fruition now that I've been thinking about back in, since 2012, 2013, and there are things I'm thinking about now that I just won't have the time to get to until, you know, 2022, maybe. So I think about things, I hound on them as I'm, as I'm working on other projects. Um, and staying aware of things I'm watching, whether it be movies or TV or, or you know, just life events, they'll keep adding to those thoughts and those ideas, and they'll keep maturing, they'll keep, I'll keep playing with them. Um, I'll start keeping a list of things and titles and words that inspire me that eventually might bubble into some you know, realize it, realized things. And as it gets closer and closer and the ideas really start to solidify, that's when I start to think about, okay, who can I collaborate with? Am I the best person to be the subject of, of the work to, to, to speak through, or is, it, is this an opportunity to collaborate with other individuals? Um, I usually work with people I know on some level. Um, it's never a, like a paid, impersonal exchange. 
It's usually a social kind of um, uh, event where you know it's a dialogue that started with, with someone, if it's not me, and we talk about the project. They give me feedback, we think through it together, um, and try to understand where they see themselves in it, how I see us working together, and that ultimately is, usually leads to a photo shoot. For me, when I start shooting, I'm painting. I'm, I'm already, that's my sketching. That's my first iteration of sketching. I start thinking through the images, I start thinking through the poses, seeing what's striking. I really approach it from, from the gut. What's, what's, what's visceral? What's really dynamic or interesting or exciting visually? Um, because I've already probably put in years of thinking about the works. So now I just want to find images that really speak to me. I'll start painting, and it's a, a cycle of painting, reflecting, painting, reflecting. I got great advice from uh, my professor in undergrad that you, you'll probably want to look at the work as long as it takes to, to work on it. And the second good piece of advice he gave me was um, invest in good storage. I'm very excited. I received an invitation from the Smithsonian Institution to do a commissioned portrait of Omar Bearden. And I'm very excited. It's a great opportunity. It's something that um, is humbling and makes me a little nervous. But it's work I'm very familiar with and I'm very excited by um, his story. He was an artist, he was an activist, he was a community leader, um, he was a change maker. And uh, I'm, very, I'm very excited to, to, to think through his life and his image through my work. My advice for a young artist, an aspiring artist, is to stay curious and give, your, give yourself permission to experiment, to play, to explore, and realize that you're part of an ecosystem. There are people out there that will support what you do if you don't find that support at home. And once you find your support system, continue to ask questions about the world. Why is it the way it is and who says so? If you ask yourself that question through the work, you'll always be encouraged to push yourself, to try new things, to challenge expectations on yourself or expectations around what you do. And you'll find yourself in, in really exciting and, and potentially uh, curious predicaments that you didn't expect. To get involved and support the Urbana Public Arts Program, please contact the Public Arts Coordinator Rachel Storm at rlstorm at urbanaillinois.us or 217-328-8265.